when, when I look at the news or even when I talk to different individuals just throughout life, uh, one of the things that I'm just getting more and more convinced of is people need confidence. They need confidence about the future. Another way of saying confidence about the future is hope, that there is a need for hope. And when it comes to the question of Israel, when it comes to the question of the Jewish people, what is to be our approach uh, in reaching them? It's, it's the gospel, because the gospel is the message of hope. Now specifically, when it comes to the Jewish people, I think that's very important, and here's why. Because when I think of the history uh, of, of the Jewish people as seen throughout the scripture, um, in terms of the oppression of Egypt, the oppression of the Babylonians, the oppression of the Romans, uh, the, the atrocities of what happened um, uh, during a, a Nazi Germany, uh, I, I, I can't think of a people, in my opinion, that, have, that actually have gone through more travesties and, and tragic and pain and suffering over millennia than, than the Jewish people. And they are a people who need hope, people who need assurances um, about what it is that, why do they exist? Now, when I think of, um, of a, pl a great place to go to where we see God giving tremendous assurances uh, to the Jewish people, it's actually found in Daniel chapter seven. Why Daniel seven? Because here is a, a faithful Jewish prophet um, who is in Babylonian captivity that has that is a far cry from the promises of Genesis 11 and Genesis 12. Genesis 12 makes it very clear that I will bless you, make you a blessing, not be stuck, you know, in the prison camps of Babylonia. And it's clear from the scripture that Daniel was a man of the word, he was a man of prayer, and he was a man who needed assurance. He's going, hey, wait a minute, he goes, what about all the promises? And so what we find in Daniel 7, we find this glorious a plan delineated by God, his divine strategy of how it is that he's going to lead uh, 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 the people of God into the promise that he made to his servant, uh, his servant Abraham. And so what we find there is we sign the Son of Man and we find out from the New Testament that the Son of Man is the Jewish King, Jesus Christ. And, and to him was given a kingdom and a dominion and, uh, and, uh, and authority. But then we find out later in Daniel 7 that the people, they received what the Son of Man received. They received a power, dominion, and authority. But there's a caveat. There's, there's, a, there's a qualifier that what precedes them receiving the kingdom and authority is suffering. And, it, and, and the Holy Spirit just highlights it through the angel. He highlights at least three times in Daniel 7, you will suffer. Uh, there is coming a great crisis through this most evil man, this little horn, the Antichrist, who's going to bring tremendous pressure to the earth. And at the very tip of the arrow will be the Jewish people who will encounter tremendous, tremendous pressure. And the question is, why do they have all this pressure? Well, when we go to the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 16, we see that Jesus identifies himself as, self as a son of man, uh, clearly pointing back to Daniel chapter seven, and we find out that Jesus had to suffer to come into his glory. And so why do the people suffer? Because Jesus suffered. And there's a, there's a whole dynamic there about suffering that prepares uh, a people uh, uh, for glory. It is the, it is the fellowship of his, uh, of his sufferings. Now, the gospel gives us the message of hope. The gospel gives us the assurance that everything that God promised to the Jewish people, thus the nations, that it will come about. The Yahweh, the uncreated God, the second person of the Trinity, he becomes a man in Jewish flesh and he walks among us. He shares the good news of the gospel. He talks about the kingdom of his father. He lays down his life. He says, he says, I was born to die. He dies on the cross for, uh, for, the, for the sins of the Jews and for the sins of the nation of the world. He's buried, he's risen from the dead. Now, the, now we have the issue of assurance. It says in, um, in, in, in Acts chapter 17 that the resurrection was an assurance. This man has been risen from the dead. He cannot die. He, he, he has been swallowed up in immortality. And all the promises that God made to Abraham are embodied in this man. And he will bring it about to, to the Jewish people and to the nations of the earth. Now, what is interesting is the Apostle Paul says this. He, uh, he, he talks about the gospel being to the Jew first. My good friend Samuel Whitfield, he talks about this thing called the Jewish 
priority, that there's a priority in the gospel. The gospel is first to the Jews because it, in, it encapsulates everything that God promised to the nation of Israel and, his, and, by, and he's given assurance of this by raising Jesus Christ from the dead. Paul the Apostle in Acts chapter 13, he says that we bring to you glad tidings because God has fulfilled his promise, the promise that he made to the fathers by raising Jesus Christ from the dead. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. If there's anything that we need in this hour, it's intercession for the Jewish people, the revelation of the Son of God to break in upon them, and for the conviction of sins that they would turn to their Messiah.